Big time hit from Granham. In the air in a deep left field. It's gone! Oh, It's opening night here at the Fieldhouse, the home opener for boys volleyball. It's the Durfee Hilltoppers hosting their rivals in just game two of the year, the New Bedford Whalers. Hello again, everybody. Evan Massoud, great to be back with you and welcome to a new season of sports. It is the spring and we got a special guest, Chris Santos from New Bedford Cable, jumping in here to throw on the headset for this rivalry game. So we welcome the New Bedford fans as well. Chris, tonight, Game two, we don't usually see this matchup so early in the year. This is a heavyweight game for just the second one. Yeah, it sure is. And for Ben Caturley, this is uh, obviously game number two. A good first game with high expectations coming into this one after beating a very good North Quincy team, ranked number 16 in the state. So uh, he feels very confident with this group of kids. And what it is this year is an off season of training that really worked out well for his players. Usually, Evan, you know as well as I do, boys volleyball had got off to a late start around this area, and you get athletes becoming volleyball players. Now we're getting off season training where now we're getting volleyball players into the mix so this has been a lot of fun he really loves this team and they're off to a good stop you know and it's a shame that you know for boys volleyball it's always a little different we see a lot of different schools because down here on the south coast not a lot of d1 opponents so and brendan kelly told me the same thing a lot of kids taking advantage of the club sports and putting in that work yeah. in the off season for durfee this actually should have been game three but on Tuesday night, uh, they had to postpone because both Braintree and Durfee had National Honor Society. So they lost a the game there. They didn't play. They lost their first to Weymouth in five sets. Brendan said they were thrilled with how the guys played. They came out and they were playing volleyball. Yeah, and that's what this is all about in the Southern Alliance League with Taunton, Brockton, uh, you got the two local teams around here, obviously New Bedford uh, and Durfee. And then you throw in New Bedford Volk, and that's a big rivalry for New Bedford Whalers as well. So that's five good teams around this area. And then you got to start branching out. Okay, now you got to start traveling. And when you start doing that, you got to get up to the Boston areas. And you know those are always good schools. But it's good to see that both of these two teams and this rivalry that's carrying over from other sports is now carrying over to boys volleyball. The growth is there, it's certainly getting bigger, and every year this matchup is one we really look forward to more and more. So, folks, Chris and I are going to go put on the headsets. We're thrilled to be back on the air for Spring Sports, live coverage right after the break. It's time for spring cleaning. The city is rolling out an updated street sweeper schedule. Beginning in April, four phases of street sweeping will be implemented across 12 neighborhoods. Each phase represents one week of each month. For example, the streets in phase one will be addressed in week one of every month. Curb to curb access is essential as drivers may make several passes. Please avoid parking during posted times on new signage in your neighborhood. Parking restrictions are just a few hours, similar to a parking ban during a snowstorm. Questions may be directed to the Department of Community Maintenance at 508-324-2584 or the Mayor's Office at 508-324-2600. A map highlighting all sectors will be posted on the city's website and social media pages. Thank you for your cooperation in keeping our city clean. Fall River Public Schools has opportunities for positions in multiple areas for people looking to work with the next generation. Come grow with our team. We have openings for teachers, paraprofessionals and teaching assistants, and other educational support positions available. We are also looking to fill operations support positions such as custodial, security, and food service. We offer competitive salary and benefit plans. We have rewarding work available in our 21st century schools and learning environments. Come grow with us. Please contact the Human Resources Department at 508-675-8420, extension 53708, or see our postings on our website at fallriverschools.org. Senior number 13. 
We welcome you back inside the Luke Urban Fieldhouse. Evan Massoud and Chris Santos with you for our first broadcast here on Fred TV this spring. Kind of a dual effort as it turned out to be here. So uh, you fans in New Bedford watching as well, we welcome you to Durfee and inside the Fieldhouse. Last time, Chris, that um, I was here in this building, Durfee had a double header for basketball playoffs. Girls dominated in the first game. Boys lost a heartbreaker at the end. And uh, But it was as electric and as good of an atmosphere as I've ever experienced here. You know, I mean, I, I wasn't around working, obviously, in the days of Chris Heron and prior to that. So I never saw this place jam-packed, like, past capacity. But that was fantastic. Um, We'll get your thoughts. I know you've been to some of those. We have the anthem now. We'll take a quick break here. Well, this is why we always try to come back mid-anthem or afterwards because I always think I can get a thought in. <laughs> and the Stars and Stripes rule, so I get I take the back seat. <laughs> well, but, hey, but, listen, to go <laughs> off what you're going, uh, the Skip Karam Court yeah. has seen its action uh, in the fall. Obviously, it has seen it in the winter. Yep. And now we're here in the spring, and the basketball that you saw was outstanding. It was. And it was a pleasure to be here even when they played New Bedford during their rivalries. But now it's on to volleyball, and it's a spring sport, and it's the boys' sport. Yeah. Usually it's the fall with the girls. Now it's the boys, and it, this, this sport has really grown in this area, and I'm hoping that more s schools catch on besides uh, Volk, New Bedford, and Durfee in this area, and we can get more of mm. boys' volleyball because that would be nice. But expect another good one. New Bedford coming off a big... 3-1 victory in sets over North Quincy, the number 16 seed, and a tough loss for the opener for the Hilltoppers, mm. uh, a five-setter against Weymouth on the road. Yeah, and, and, you know, Coach Kelly telling me that that one was one that he felt really could have gone either way, um, and that's how happy he was with the performance on opening night. Um, you know, here, this matchup here was... Uh, Tough one last year as well. Both of these schools, they're competitors. And add in the rivalry factor, and it takes it to that next level. So um, watching both warm up, um, thought New Bedford's swings were a little little stronger than Durfee's, but they also have some a little bit more height in some areas, so that can lend itself to getting on top of the ball better. So uh, we'll see how that pans out, see how Durfee can handle this first serve of the night. We are underway. <laughs> here in the spring season for boys volleyball. And it'll be the Whalers who strike first. That was Nyron Foster with the kill. Yep, two new players on this team, Nyron Foster, and the other one is Montano, number 16. Two outside hitters that Ben Caturley is very happy to have on his team. It's always a good indication when you see the outside hitters and see how parallel they can hit to the line as now New Bedford gets the defense involved there early. That was Tavares and Rosa. But, you know, looking at um, Foster on that, that first swing, you know, sure, you can send it down the court, but if you can go side to side and work the parallel lines as well, you can make for a long day when you're the, de when you're the defender. Nice dig on the back side. It goes all the way back to Durfee's side of the court. And now Milford unloads and Durfee 
with their first point. Good job by the Hilltoppers of staying poised. Even though the ball came back, you gotta make your good passes to your setter. They did it there, and then the put away. Josh Sainan, um also, he had the first hit there that exploded and came back. Uh, Josh, you know, from basketball, he didn't play last year. He, in fact, uh, was a, a star track and, for track and field for Durfee. Um, and he said, you know what? I want to come back. I want to play with my friends, and I want to play volleyball for my senior year. And uh, so I know Coach Kelly is thrilled to have him back uh, because of the athleticism that comes along with it. Unfortunately, not a very good point there from J.O. wearing number six. Had a couple of miscues. Advantage to New Bedford with that one. They took advantage of it. Got an early 3-1 lead in set one. And J.V. for the Whalers uh, really controlled that match. And um, they took the J.V. one. It, they swept Durfee in two sets. There's uh, De Silva trying to pancake it there, but couldn't... Um, Oh, excuse me, my uh, Santeo rather, Santeo mm -hmm. for New Bedford, wearing the libero, the red libero. Both teams in uh, white here. Durfee has red shoulders there, kind of a, a two-tone look, but New Bedford in all white on the right side of your screen. How about that? Deflected and the Whalers with the point. Yeah, this young man can get off the ground, as you just saw mm. there, Montano. I was watching him in practice. He's got the best leaping ability on the team by far. Whenever you're targeting that 10-foot line and you can actually get that trajectory, yeah. um, that's, that's gonna, it's hard to deal with when you're playing that front line. Milford took something off there and took a little too much off as it actually doesn't make it over. I think with these two teams, that's the thing I'm going to be looking for the most, Evan, the unforced errors. To me, that's an unforced error. Oh, yeah. That's got to get over. So I'm going to keep an eye on that to see who's getting more. Big swing that time, and it's down in the corner. The Hilltoppers. That time, Milford not taking much off. He had full swing right there. Didn't fool around with that one. No, not at all. Milford, um, a number of seniors on this team. This this team, we talk about how uh, the basketball teams for Durfee are going to look a lot different next year. So many seniors, key players. Uh, well, this volleyball roster for Coach Brendan Kelly is... Uh, very senior heavy here. Great block in front by Matuzic. Whalers with another chance, and they stuff it on their side of the net. Does not make it over. Unforced error there that time by Tavares. Try to go with the back set after the block nicely on Montano of New Bedford. So Durfee in a position here to tie it up in the early going. Ooh, ooh. And that's coming back. Everything is in play here at this field house. The raffle, uh, the raffle, the scaffolding, <laughs> the rafters is what I wanted to say. The basketball nets, which are folded up, but that glass is in play. Everything in play here at the field house. Makes for an interesting home court advantage. And Durfee leads now six to five. With two back-to-back -back aces right there from number one, yeah, Mil Milford. Milford with the good serves there, not returnable. A lot of power behind them. Durfee with three straight points. That one short, we'll give it back to the Whalers. Nice to have Chris on campus here for the first time since 2018 spring. Everybody's on campus yep. again. The school construction done, yep. the fields basically done, at least the varsity side of things. Softball with their new stadium, baseball with the redo of Skip Lewis Field. And uh, finally, everybody back on campus. Still a couple snags we're working out with the technology side and luckily Mother Nature kind of bailed it out. Not Fred TV technology, but stuff for, with the new fields themselves. Um, so luckily Mother Nature bailing out makes it difficult for scheduling, but games we planned to cover this week we wouldn't have been able to cover anyway because of the rain. <laughs> so that one doesn't make it over. But it also gives you that feel of, okay, I'm done with my practice. Hey, let's go inside, see what's going on. Oh, hey, wait a minute. There's a boys' volleyball <laughs> game. Yeah. Let's keep it. Let's take a look at this and start rooting for, you know, our team. We actually, good crowd here for, for volleyball yep. purposes. I, I would love to see the day when this place can be as full for volleyball as it is for a basketball game. Um, that would be tremendous to see. Um, but as you said, it's building. Um, you know, I'm interesting, 
I find it interesting that um, Dartmouth, and I, and I know Dartmouth has the addition of lacrosse that we don't have as a boys offering in the spring, mm -hmm. um, but I'm surprised that Dartmouth High doesn't have more traction for a boys volleyball program, especially when you consider how successful Rachel Lassie's girls program has been and the following that they get. Yeah, I can it, agree. I can agree with that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm, I really thought there would be more because New Bedford's pulling numbers, obviously. Durfee's done fine with numbers. Um, I, I, I guess, yeah, I, I really am surprised. That, that's maybe the one school I would look at for common opponents for Durfee down this way that I'm surprised Dartmouth doesn't have a boys team. But maybe it, maybe it is the lacrosse thing. I know baseball is pretty big for Dartmouth High. And then when you add in that other sport that, like, Durfee doesn't have lacrosse, Maybe that's part of it. I'm not sure. Um, never really asked Jeff Karen or Andy Crisofulli, you know, the Jeff, former AD, of course, folks, um, but and Andy, who's there now. Never really asked, but it's a volleyball school. <laughs> they, they do very well. Oh, yeah. Um, so. Well, in fact, right now I'm trying to uh, organize it in the middle schools where oh, nice. we can have co-ed volleyball and that's what's going on in the new bedford middle schools in fact not one but two teams per middle school that's awesome yep new bedford taking the lead back here putting together a short run with uh Senteo serving another good serve flat line across the not much spin on it very tough to return those uh, talk about it every time yep. those yep. will steal the baseball term basically a knuckleball and boy does the ball dance <laughs> it, it really can move around when you're looking at it coming straight at you 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 folks at home don't get to see it on the camera angle from here but when you're on a court and the ball's coming right at you it's tough to track it'll just float or it'll just drop or it'll dart left and right it's not easy at all down by three they came back took the lead, now New Bedford comes back, mm -hmm. does their part, they have a four point lead, and that's why we had our first timeout from uh, Brendan Kelly, which is, I would think, a smart timeout, because you don't want that lead to extend, and so Durfee's just gonna regroup on that. But going back to my middle school, right now I'm up to nine teams, two from Keith, two from Normandon, and two from Roosevelt, that's six. Then I have Fahaven joining us, I have Ford from Acushionet joining us, and I just got O Rochester joining us. Wow. And so I'm gonna have up to a 19, 19 league right now, and I'm looking forward to it. That is fantastic. Yep. So, and, and they're playing now in the spring, or they will we be? We start in May. Wow. Yep, May but, 1st is our first yeah. game, along with flag football, but there's only eight teams, O Rochester's not in that one. So we're trying to keep them busy, even yeah. at the younger tier. No, and that's where it starts. Yep. That, that's how you get feeder programs. That's right. I mean, that, that's. That's the goal. Get them interested now and, and, and early and learning the sport early. And then what happens is they say, oh, I can be a whaler. Oh, I can be a hilltopper because yep. I got those skills and I've been playing the sport for years now. I, that's Congratulations, Chris. That's fantastic. Yep. That's really great. And remember, great. we get kids that can go to Volk, so I'm yeah. sure they're happy as well. Yeah, because the New Bedford Volk volleyball teams are outstanding too. Yep. They are tough. Yeah, Richie Gomes does a nice job mm. over there at Volk. Ooh. Big hit and out of bounds. Whalers with the point. I mean, Wareham is uh, usually a team Durfee will play. Yep. Um, the Vikings. And, of course, North Quincy and Quincy. Yep. Taunton, Taunton, Brockton. Brockton. Yep. New Bedford, of course. Monstable. Yeah, one, I, I know in girls, I think the boys have them this year. Yep. You know, why am I guessing? Uh, uh, I, I only have the <laughs> schedule right here in front of me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Dayton Rehoboth is on there. Okay. Uh, Bellingham, King Philip Regional. Yep. That's that's another yeah, one. Good one. Um, yeah, Quincy's on. Attleboro. I wasn't sure, but yeah, okay. Attleboro's on there too. It's a good schedule. And actually quite a few teams yep. that are not all the way up in Boston, which is Kind of nice. Yep. I mean, it's not always ended up yeah, that way. Yeah, New Bedford's way. the same, and I know Bonstable's on his schedule. I think Catholic Memorial and Zaverian Brothers was another one. Nice, uh, The yeah. other two that were on their schedule. I, I would like to, just for level of play in some of the sports, it would be nice to pick mm. pick them up once in a while. Um, I know, you know, Brockton does. They're so close, and mm. Brockton plays those teams, and their strength of schedule and 
I mean, it's beneficial. When you're D1, you, you can't go any higher up. So, you know, you're either stuck playing down or you got to play at level. I always think that these lower division schools have it be have it made because they can play up and see what's what's ahead, you know, and it helps them later on. Really like that throw down there by Rosa. Yeah. For his third kill of the game. Short serve. And little, ooh, a little hesitancy yeah. there from Sane, and he, yeah. he waited. And he'll go back. Good block up front. Yeah, yeah. Whalers had everybody forward. Yeah, the Campos made a good block for Durfee. And down only three now, 14-11. Athletic play there, third touch. Durfee got to dump it back. Santeo will play it. Set up for the quick kill, dug out by Durfee's libero, De Silva. Big hit from Milford. And the Whalers have it sized up, coming from the back line and letting it fly. That one out of play. Good rally there, both sides having to work at it. Third touches and whatnot, not just some you know quick serve received, a bit of a misfire that time. But uh, always like when you can get those you know multiple possessions in a rally, you really start to see the communication build between the players on each side and you, know, you start talking to each other more and Sometimes these serve receives three touches and a point is not always the best thing. Right. You know, it keeps the match moving, sure, but <laughs> but from a, 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 a rhythmic standpoint, you kind of lose it a little bit. Another big hit from the outside there. Far side, Milford. Uh, anytime the ball comes over the net and you don't get it to, obviously, your setter where mm. he can set it and it's the third hit and you just have to hit it over, that's a loss. Of course it that, is. That's a big loss right yeah. there, and teams do not like that. They have to make sure that they make something happen, like this oh. gentleman right here. That's ridiculous. Like you call it Montano. Yeah, he's got some Woo -hoo -hoo. talent. He can leap out of the building. <laughs> there's no doubt about I'm it. I'm going to check that floor and see if there's a springboard there or something. That was unbelievable. He's having some right arm issues. I know that. Yeah. But when he gets up, and if that ball is there, you better look out. That literally was on the 10-foot line. Oh, there's line. no doubt about it. That was just insane. Matuzic with the set, and that's going to yeah. go long. That's didn't get on top of it. Yeah. yeah, didn't get on top of it enough, J.O. Good swing, just a little early on the hit. And it's going to put the Whalers back up by four. Durfee cut it to two, but now two straight for the Whalers and looking to add and try to close out the first set. Strong. There he is again. Good block, though. The Matuzic timed it well there with uh, DeCampos. Was it deflected? No. Out of bounds. It will be Whaler's point. Yeah, Brendan Kelly liked that, though, because you know that was the setup they were looking for. That's what he wanted. Yeah. The execution just wasn't there. Working this side now with the serve. Matuzic setting. Now a little late. So, see, you, and this is what you get early in the season. So, you know, J.O. Is, is a returning player for Durfee, a senior. He knows what he's doing. He's athletic. Um, but still working out those timing things a little bit. It's just like baseball and softball with the bat and the pitches and seeing live action versus, you know, um, practices. So we saw an early hit. Now waited a little too long. Hits it into the net. So those things work themselves out with every every possession. Yeah, with it being game two, working yeah. the kinks out and trying to, you know, establish themselves. Sometimes, you know, you, you get some balls that you think are, are ones that I should put away. And really it's not. And, and, yeah. and, and more of thinking, well, hey, I, I can still do this. And Brendan Kelly, I talked to him a little bit earlier, and he's talking about, you, you know, what his players know they can do, but yet at the same time, there is another level. Yeah, and we're sure. not there yet. We're getting there. And we need to still gel to work to get to that level. And it makes perfect sense. And you're seeing right here, they're up to like maybe six unforced errors uh, that, you know, really are helping New Bedford out. Yeah. That's why they have a six-point lead here in game one. But, you know, you have to eliminate some of those and realize, hey, maybe this isn't the ball for me. Try to live for another time and, mm. and see what happens. But, uh, you know, still time to come back in this one. Yeah, you know, one of the things I've I've noticed particularly over the last, well, maybe let's say from since like the COVID season, which was abbreviated, um, and there's another unforced. That's yeah. number seven. Um, 
since the COVID season, I've noticed that this team in particular has been more of a second half team. It, it always ends up like that, it seems. Last year, they did not start well. They finished so strong that they made it into the tournament. They earned that playoff berth. It's a double touch. Oh, they, no, it's calling it a lift. And to me, Evan, that's coaching. Yeah. Because now you coach them up. You mm -hmm. get them to where you want them to be. You start to uh, put in your system of where you want the players that you need. And the next thing you know, you have a good second half and make the tournament. The unfortunate thing is the last two years, <laughs> that came right to us. Um, the last two years, though, <laughs> Durfee made the tournament. They drew Winchester both years. Yep. And um, Winchester's program is really, um, they are tough. <laughs> They're really One tough. One of the elite. Yeah. That's they, nice. They were, out, they were outstanding. And coming, coming to us again. Oh, boy. Milford comes flying up to the booth here. I was ready to catch him. You were ready. I was ready for him. <laughs> Great effort. He would have ran me over like a <laughs> Mack truck runs over a little sports car. <laughs> Let's put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> I got you to protect on one side and the computer on the other. <laughs> oh, boy. That's why we do the game. <laughs> right there. Yeah. Two points away from I've set number one. <laughs> I've only had one time, uh -oh. one time where a player literally, like, crashed into me, and that was at Diamond because we set up on the floor between – Diamond has that accordion wall, if you will. Yeah. Um, so – between the bleachers is space. On one side is the teams and the scores table. The other side, like what you're seeing here where the locker rooms are, folks, on the back side of the screen, uh, back back of the field house, we put a table down there, and that's where I'll sit. Uh, and, I mean, I'm right on the court, okay? <laughs> well, last season, ball coming out of bounds, and it was like fourth quarter. It was one possession game. So every possession matters, and here they come. <laughs> I couldn't react fast enough. Luckily, the computer didn't go down. I jumped up to get out of the way. And, uh, oh, yeah, it was, it, was, it was a moment. It drew the attention of the fans, that's for sure. Like, oh, there goes the TV guy. <laughs> set point here in the first as the Whalers have really closed out this first set strong. And that little, little stutter step by Milford actually messed up the timing of the Whalers and Durfee will live to play another point. Just enough to put it in that spot right in the middle. Yeah. Over the set of Barboza, who's going to Harvard, by the way. Oh, I, nice. I don't know if it has anything to do with volleyball. No, that's but he, awesome. But he's definitely uh, going to Harvard, so congratulations to him. Congratulations for sure. Another point for Durfee. Oh, they went right at the rookie. Came in right in, and a defensive specialist <laughs> for Amino De Rosario, and let that one get three. Let's see if they go there again. Matusik does go there oh, again, and it's a tough ball to play. Has some help yeah. that time, though. Roderick's able to get it to Santeo on the third. Matusik going to set it up here. JL wants some ah. revenge, and he couldn't get it through the defense. No. Not a game one that I'm sure Brendan Kelly's quite happy with because a lot of mistakes, a lot of easy errors, and you saw one right there from J.O. that just was not able to put away. So, hey, listen, they got three minutes to regroup. They get three minutes to figure out a new rotation if that's what they want to do, and then come back and set number two. But the first one belongs to the Whalers, 25-16. Yeah, that's the beauty of it here is that, you know, we get these little timeouts, and they really can take advantage of that stuff, um, you know, in between, in between the sets, work out the kinks, especially this early in the season. These three minutes are like gold for coaches mm -hmm. uh, to have that guaranteed stop in between the actions. So... Um, all right, two minutes or so, just a little more. Then we'll take a quick break here on Fred TV. More live volleyball after this. Stay with us. I'm Mike Labossier, what's up a reservation forester. And I'm Paul Furland, the administrator of community utilities. Protecting open space is a benefit today and it's a gift to future generations. For over 150 years, Fall River has been a leader in environmental preservation. The southeastern Massachusetts Bioreserve ensures forests and fields remain undeveloped and accessible. The Community Preservation Act is a vital component to fulfill climate goals. Since 2017, CPA funds totaling nearly $1.3 million have been used to acquire conservation areas in Fall River. 
Educational programs within the bioreserve connect families to nature and promote understanding and respect for diverse culture, history, and wildlife. Half of Fall River, about 12,000 acres, an area the size of Mattapoisa, is protected water and woodland. Healthy forests minimize flooding, reduce erosion, and provide habitat for endangered species. As the region expands manufacturing and technology, people are directly reliant on green infrastructure as an irreplaceable source of clean water and air. Miles of trails wind through unique landscapes which appeal to hikers, cross-country skiers, and mountain bikers. Specific areas are open for safe seasonal hunting. The Bioreserve promises endless discoveries and recreational experiences year-round. CPA funds have supported thousands of significant projects in Massachusetts. Thank you for your continued interest in community beautification and betterment. Welcome back, everybody, inside Durfee High School. The teams have switched sides. New Bedford on your left now, Durfee on your right. As we are ready for game number two, set number two. Whalers taking that first one, 25-16. Running away with it towards the end, Chris, really um, was pretty tight through the first, say, half of the points needed, and then Whalers took advantage of uh, oh, some think, of those unforced errors yeah, you absolutely. alluded to and, and put together some, some good serves as well while they add possession and really built up that lead in a hurry. Yeah, Foster, Montano, and Rosa, the three big names uh, getting their hits and kills in. So Durfee gets the start here for set number two. Let's see if they can build some momentum early and put New Bedford uh, chasing them. De Silva. The libero for the Hilltoppers will serve to start us off here in the second set. Serve coming in a little short. That's a good dig there out the back side of it. But New Bedford with the unforced error on the double touch after the dig from Montano. So Durfee starts ahead. Another good dig and on another low serve. Big hit, good block in front for Durfee, and it's a 2-0 start. You're a busy guy in the spring, Chris. You were, you were saying about the middle school volleyball. Yes. But you coach tennis at yep. Stonehill, yep. and uh, Mother Nature not, not being too favorable for anybody north of 495. Yeah, this is ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of tough out there, and I've uh, been having to play a lot of indoor stuff. Yeah. But... At the same time, uh, you know, games like this here, volleyball, uh, it, it's good for us to at least get some sports because, boy, let me tell you, if you didn't, it'd take a while. Yeah. Another good block. Durfee with a 4 nothing lead to start the second, and they're doing it convincingly as well. Some good blocks in front, good serving from De Silva. Mixing it up, too. Started on the left, moving all the way over to the right now. Kind of playing peekaboo where he wants to go with it. Yeah, a little long, and that's unfortunate because it's going to break up the run and it turns possession over yeah, to the Whalers. But he jinked himself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> too much movement. No. I like that, though, and I yeah, know Coach Kelly, that's something he does talk about a lot is, you know, don't just target the same spot. Work the, work the other side of the court like mm -hmm. a pitcher works a strike zone. You know, you can't give him the same thing every time when you're serving. So I liked what he did. It's just unfortunate it went long there. Milford unloads. Coach Caturley with the assist there, it won't help out. 5-1, Durfee. That's the, that's the person you want the ball to go to. So make your passes, get your sets, and find number one. That's gonna be short. Boy, J.O.'s struggling right now to get his game going. Because again, 5-1, you wanna build off of that. You wanna get yeah. the service. Make them make the mistakes, or make the winners on you. Yeah, so the, the two points the Whalers yeah. have are unforced errors. They were bad serves. Milford bailing them out again. again. So six to two, and that's good, because we talk about, right, 5-1 could have been 6-1, yep. but it also could have been 5-3. 6-2, not a bad place mm -hmm. to be, and Milford, who really, he got Durfee, you know, chipping away early in that first set. Now he'll go on the serve, see if he can string together if he's gonna be a tough play in front of the bench. 
front of the scores table, rather. Centeo, third touch, sends it over. Matuzic will set. Big hit up into the rafters. Pinballing around. Nice That's still in play. Barboza. Unbelievable to read wow. that. Durfee was celebrating. The play was not over. Kept in. Zanin kills it. That was a big point right there. An unbelievable play by Barboza, as you said, to, to track that ball. I didn't think it was going to be playable, and it certainly was. And the lead continues up to five. I think Caturli will call timeout if they lose this point. Centeno went down, got back to his feet. Milford. Out of bounds. Just out of bounds on the side there. I think he thought he had a deflection, but not the case. It's a close one, but there's only one chair umpire. Yeah. She's got the line call. I do love when we have playoffs, when we get the line judges. Yep. At the court. I mean, it's just, yep. it's with, amazing. With the flag. To the same token, it also amazes me that we'll have <laughs> we'll have four officials for a playoff game on the smallest yeah. smallest court yeah. you play on all year, but the maximum we'll get for soccer is three <laughs> three officials, mm -hmm. you know. Matuzic with the good set there. Yeah, that's the one you want there. That's the oh, one you want baby. there. That's he once again from Motano. Ball just explodes off of his. Off of his palm now, Let's there. give Tavares a lot of credit. Boy, he kept the ball alive twice yeah. uh, in that exchange. And again, New Bedford hanging around early. Could have been a lot worse. Only down three now. Good serve from Tavares. That is in. No. Nope. Ooh, that was close. Yeah, I mean, it's starting, to, it's starting to draw a circle around number six. That's where the serves have been going. Let's see if they go back at him again. And they do. Yeah. And they do. They do. Yeah, they're, they're seeing something there right now. Seven to six, and Tavares trying to tie this one up here in the early goings. Whalers were down seven to two. Let's see if he goes back there. Four straight points. Nope. Poked over in front of the net. Third touch. Big block in front. Yeah, that's a good block because that wasn't a bad set right there. Not at all. Now, Matusik did a nice job of getting that up. And that's from behind him to get it to Sanan. But unfortunately, New Bedford just did a good, better job of a double block. I know. I was just going to say because Matusik was not, yeah. he was out of position. Yeah. He still made a good set on that ball. Ooh, Ooh off the head. Well, Ooh. that'll do. <laughs> oh. All right. All right. All right. And De Silva chirps back at the net yeah. a little bit and here. Brendan so. Kelly says, okay, we don't teach that, but it works. Look at him, he's laughing at him. He knows. <laughs> <laughs> Good serve there from Braden Bartley. Here he is. Tough play. Oh, yeah. it's going to go out. But I think he was trying to go over the net, just try to go back to yeah. the middle and help your, and let your buddies get it. Good effort there, but it's 8-8. Eight, eight. All right, so now Montano is with tied at eight. We didn't see him serve in the first set, did we? I don't, I don't think we not did. Sure. Tough play at the net, yep. poked over. Great and job it's by Barboza. Out of bounds. And now Matuzic will serve for Durfee. Out. Wow. Who's in? Ace. So 10-8. I really didn't think it landed in there. Yep. I mean, I'm a little screened here. I got I got coach blocking sure. me too, but that's that out. out. <laughs> that one out. Too much to the side. 
Now, this is similar to the first one, and this is where New Bedford started to take control. Right. I want to see what happens here now in the middle points to see if they start to wear down the hilltoppers through well, the middle. And Centeo happened to be the guy serving at that mm -hmm. point, too, when things turned a bit for, for New Bedford. Yeah. So, Good job. Yeah. yeah. And not a whole heck of a lot on that nope. one, just good placement. Yep. Now, remember, he's hit six bombs <laughs> and so now you're expecting that and right. then you come up with a little change up yeah and he was behind you know he's playing back line yeah, too 10-10 Centeo with the serve again Ooh. that was close to a yeah. double touch there might have gotten away with one third touch back to the Hilltoppers Matuzic will set backwards and it's going to sail yeah when Matuzic sets backwards though you got to get the ball closer to the net the yeah. setters, that's the main setter's job. Get the ball closer to the net. Yeah, I mean, because if, if you're hitting from the 10-foot line, you can't get the downward no. angle. You're never going to get it over. And, then they're, and they're able to get that ball back, too. Yeah. Oh. And, and they're coming after J.O. And a timeout. That's a, been a decent run here for New Bedford. It was 7-2. to two. So they've outscored Durfee 10 to three over the last 13 points. They've retaken the lead again. Yeah, we talked about it here in the middle. It's a good timeout from Kelly once again because you have to settle this down that they're going on that little run. But again, you got to make passes where Matuzek can get to positions and then his sets have to get closer to the net. And Matuzek's been actually quite solid, you know, in his, in his time here at Durfee as the setter. Um, Coach Kelly's had some really solid setters. In fact, uh, a number of them that have, we've had a few that have hit 1,000 assists um, since this program started. So um, we've seen some milestones. We do have, we actually do have a banner for 1,000 assists. Mm -hmm. And um, so the, the setter position's been one that has been pretty consistent for the Hilltoppers over the years. It's not so much a revolving door thing. Um, We probably would have seen we would have seen a fourth had it not been had the COVID year not uh, canceled that season because one of our seniors was he was a senior that year he, um, Andrew Saunders he would have most probably gotten it and would have been the fourth. Oh no! Did not get over. No, they did not look good on that one at all. No, Barbosa's set was a little off on that one. Third touch, jumped mm -hmm. over to Durfee, Matuzic setting. That's a better one right near the net. That's going towards the table. Third touch, Whalers, great That's job, good, yeah. and it's not going to come back. Yeah, great job by Tavaz, but a better run down by Barbosa. Yeah, to did get it that again. ball. And did again, it again. Stay up by two. Evan, you have to say that the Bedford's winning the loose ball battles. Yeah. Better right now yeah. than Durfee, and that's pretty much why they've come back. Not the, not the normal pass, set, spike. <laughs> right, yeah, no, exactly. Winning the loose balls. Trying to set up Milford again, and it's blocked. Block, Tavares. Tavares and, and Rosa denying the point for the Hilltoppers. And back to serve will be Barboza. That's a big one. So you'll give that up all day. That's close. Buried. That's close. Rosa. And it's a four-point Whalers lead here in the second. Yeah, that was Rosa. Milford. He'll get one back for Durfee as he positions it well between the defenders. And now uh, De Silva back to serve. He started off the set with some good serves. Four straight points, in fact. Going far side, across the net on the serve. Out. 
See how that set was going back yeah. instead of coming right down the line of the net. That's what has to be better. And when you go back, tough to snap, yeah. you get that ball to top spin down and in. And especially for yeah. someone like Milford who is, you know, he's charging forward. He's got forward momentum and everything. Ooh. That's in. Good swing there. Ooh, that's a nice one for him. That, That's going to make him feel yeah, better get now. Some confidence with that young man. And now he'll serve, so try to keep it going. And he's a senior too. Yep. Good serve. See, that's close to the net. Out that's a good set by Barboza. Makes it easy for Tavares to hammer that down. Foster, back to serve for the Whalers. Down the line. Yep, out of bounds. I don't think that actually, I think it went to the left of the antenna even. It didn't. Substitute. Milford to serve. Down three, getting close to the, the 20s. That's coming back, poked right back and taking him out. Well, Rosa put it there, and Matuzic said, I'm not wasting any time. <laughs> I like that. You get the clear shot. Yep. Take it. Don't always have to set if it's there. Another good serve there. That one had some down the line. nice downward Ooh. motion. That's out of that bounds. One he missed. He missed it. And Durfee uh, only managed 16 points in that first set. They're one away from tying up the second here. At 17. Switch side. Out of bounds. Oh, switch side. Ugh. So that's now twice that didn't work yeah. out for Durfee in this set. Shocking. Gives control back to the Whalers. It'll be Tavares serving. Oh, he touched it. That could have floated out too. Close to tell. Yeah, I was most certainly going out, and uh, I think some of these high schools got to find a way to get a sponsor where everyone's wearing the same sneakers. You know, now <laughs> everyone's got blue and rainbows, and you know, get you know, get Adidas in there or somebody in there, and volleyball shoes. But that's the company. personality of yeah. it, though, right? That's yeah. the personality of it, though. Yeah. Everybody's got their individual look. <laughs> get the red and oh, white. Oh, that was misplayed. Oh. Third touch yeah. right there, yeah. and it's not going to make. Centeo and crashing into the bench there. Well, Everybody yeah. parted like the Red Sea to yeah, give him room. Got about 15 people on the bench there running for their lives. <laughs> no, seriously. Get out of the way. Great effort. Just not enough. And here's Bentley. As the referees discuss what they're doing. That's good. That's not coming back. Into the stand, Souvenir City. <laughs> Good play from number one. Yeah. Again, 19-18. That's his side. That's the side he likes. Here on the left. Which is interesting being a righty. You know, I, you would think coming from the right side, yep. you'd like it better. But nope. no. That's good. 19 all. Sanan. I'm out, I think, coming from Conturley. Yep, you call it. There it is. Durfee battling back here to tie it back up again with just six points left to get. Well, it's crunch time. He remember games up to 25, but like years past, every point counts oh, yeah. in volleyball, not just when you serve. Haven't seen too many sets that Need some extra points. We, we get a couple here mm -hmm. and there, but for the most part, for the most part, it's 25 by two and you're good, so. And this is where unforced errors are very important coming down the stretch. To win games, can't you gotta eliminate easy yeah. errors. I'll tell you, one of the craziest uh, games this year I covered was a girls volleyball match. It was Diamond. On the road at Arlington, Diamond having to play D1 because of the the alignment and and with all the changeover, there was 
they didn't get their um, they didn't get approval on their op out of D1 to be in, you know in the lower mm -hmm. division, and they had to play D1. The Diamond Girls went up to D1 Arlington, and they beat them. Oh, big hit Woo. for the lead. Woo. But it was an amazing game uh, match. Diamond just played solid, and Arlington kept making unforced errors and miscommunications yep. and whatnot. And it was incredible. It was incredible. And that's why you play the game. That's it. <laughs> you know? You just never know. De Silva plays it. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Matuzic on the third. That's all he could do, but yeah. that favors New Bedford. Setting it up, pokes it over. That's all you do. To see the three and out, yeah. Murat Sturfey. That's that's big. And Rosa. Whalers up by two. In back row. Easy block for the Whalers. Yeah. Easy block, and that's gonna be a timeout from Kelly. Yeah. Just battle back to tie it and Three relatively easy points for the Whalers. Yep. I mean, you're, you're setting from the back row, number one. Yeah. That helps New Bedford. Two, you get the one third over. That helps. And then New Bedford made a good play and, and put one away. So um, they take quick three points when it was 19 all. Smart timeout. Let's see if it works for Kelly when he calls his timeout. And obviously, quick message as well because only used – Less than half the 60 seconds allowed. So Durfee now back on the court ready. Yeah, most of the timeouts are momentum breakers. That's that's yeah. pretty much what it is. Unless you really see something you don't like. Right. So three, uh, three points away. It's on the serve of Montano. He's been going right at the Silva, the libero. Yeah. Number 25, let's see if he goes there or he changes his mind. Montano, the, it. the only sophomore on the Whalers team. And that serve goes long. Durfee will get see, control now, back. So, see, now that's a good timeout because look what happens. Yeah. You know, you get the point back right away. Now they need it again. Oh. He had to go over. It hit him twice. Now Durfee's on the third touch. Yeah. Whalers out of system here. Yep. Both teams. Both teams. Mm. Someone in the net. Yep. Is that what it was? Ugh. That's a killer. You know, that's the first one called. Yeah, it is. We haven't seen any of that into the net. Two points away now. And Centeno back to serve. He's been solid. That's all Matuzak that, could do. That, <laughs> yep. Look out. Set point for the Whalers here in the second. Trying to go up 2 nothing. Sanan went with the soccer style, <laughs> and he kicked that thing right into the stands. I he know. ran over to talk to the girl or the mother and say, hey, I'm sorry. Well, set point for the Whalers, 24-20. Oh, and they went at J.O. They did. He's going to take the swing. Kind of palmed it a bit, but good. Got it over. Big swing that time to Silva. It's going to go to the net. Tough play. Oh, it took him down. Milford take, taking that one. A swing and a miss from J.O. And the Whalers go up two games to none. Well, a much better set for Durfee, but in the end here... Uh, the Whalers outscoring them six to one in those last few points. Yeah, and did you notice in those last six points, not much of a pass, a no. set, and a hit from the Hilltop. It's more of running around, trying to get the ball over in three hits. Yeah. Uh, and that just favors New Bedford. They have to do a better job uh, down the stretch, being poised and execute the game plan. Well, we're done with two here at the Fieldhouse. Yep. It is New Bedford leading two sets to none and in position for a sweep here of their arch rivals, the new, the Durfee Hilltoppers. We'll be back here with the third set live from Durfee after the break. Stay tuned.
The school administration building at 417 Rock Street was built over a hundred years ago by craftsmen from around the globe. And Mr. and Mrs. William Brennan, mill owners, raised their nine children in this statement home. Decades later, the property became too costly for a single family and was gifted to the Four River School District. Architects reconfigured the 22 rooms to accommodate administrative staff. By 2018, this historic structure was compromised, eliciting mold and water damage. Once dubbed the last big house on the hill, this extraordinary piece of architecture was in poor condition. Care was shown to restore artistic elements, including the circular railing and banister, chair rails, crown molding, antique and oak flooring, and the building is now handicap accessible. Roof work was the primary concern for the Brayton House. This new pitch surface directs water to a modernized drainage system. Ten years ago, four of our residents voted to adopt the Community Preservation Act which allows for a 1.5% surcharge on property tax bills to incentivize history, travel, diversity, and recreation. CPA funds have supported thousands of significant projects in Massachusetts. Thank you for your continued interest in community beautification and betterment. Back inside the Luke Urban Fieldhouse here at Durfee High School. Evan Massoud and Chris Santos with you as we open the spring broadcast season on Fred TV with Durfee's boys volleyball home opener and the Hilltoppers with their backs against the wall right now as we get ready for the third set. They're down two sets and in desperate need to figure it out. Thought they were going to get there, Chris, at the end of that end of that second set, but it just didn't materialize those final few points. No, early lead, Evan, and then they let New Bedford come back yeah. in, and then they started again, and then New Bedford took a little lead. They came back, but when it came down to the critical points, I just thought New Bedford executed better yeah. than Durfee. No, I, I, and I would agree, and, and I think, you know, to your point, uh, you've seen New Bedford obviously more than I have. Um, you know, you said they were tough last year. You expect even more this year. And I think, you know, from an experience standpoint and some of the things that they've been able to accomplish, yeah, I think that they came in a little bit favored here despite Durfee being the host. Oh, absolutely. I mean, you know, what Ben Caturley has said and what he's seen so far, and, and it's showing here in game yeah. two, and he needs to get this to keep running through the season. I think that, you know, you brought up such a good point in the open, though, you know, for those who joining us here later in this match in this coverage uh, you know you talked about the clubs and the volleyball club teams that these players have played on in the off season mm -hmm. and we've seen it with the girls side of things too but with the boys volleyball program in the south coast not as old mm -hmm. you know as the girls it's nice to see the players really buying in at this point and putting in that work because that wasn't always the case nope not at all and uh you know, a lot of these kids came out as football players. Yeah. Uh, basketball players trying to become volleyball players. And now you can see the numbers increasing yeah. where now we have volleyball players who are off season doing what they need to do to play this sport. It's great. Big time yeah, swing. Ahead. And it's once again Foster. Yep. Pepper's got a few guys, boy, they can rely on with Rosa, Montano, Foster, Tavares. That's a good group. Rosa back to serve for the Whalers. Matuzic serving, uh, setting rather, excuse me. Good set. That one took Sainan to the, to the net. Good Off block in front. That was DeCampos with that block for the Hilltoppers. Oh, Montano, I thought he was, <laughs> I thought mm. he was ready to, uh, oh, good job. to send it there, Milford. 
gets it to Centeo who cannot play it and it's a lead for Durfee here in the third. I thought Montana was winding up though on that last possession for the Whalers. He didn't and it actually gave Durfee some life really. Yep. Out of bounds. So three straight points for the Hilltoppers. There it is, coming back off the bleachers. A little more interchangeable parts for New Bedford than it is for Durfee, who has to rely on mostly Milford yeah. and occasionally Sanan. But after that, there's not much that you're gonna say, well, I'm really worried about this guy. Yeah, and I think that is where you know, when we talk about numbers, and Durfee really has never Oof. had a problem. <laughs> oh, boy. Um, and I don't think Durfee has a problem, no. But in this case, though, New Bedford has a, a much larger roster for varsity yep. here than, when, than we're used to seeing, really, in any of these local teams. Um, so when you have that many more players, yeah, I mean, you can, you can mix and match for sure. New Bedford has 19 on this roster. Yep. And Durfee's got 14. Right. So, I mean, it's five players, is, that's almost a, a whole rotation. Yep. Big hit. Was it deflected? No. No, it was not. But it's more of the, you know, what Bob Boza can use. If he can right. use four guys. So I'm looking right now what he can use. So he's got Foster that he's gone to who's got a lot of kills. Yep. You know, he, he's got uh, Tavares who's got a lot. Rosa who's got a lot. Montano who's got a lot. While Durfee sits back and says, well, I only rely on Milford. Right. I, I got to have more people in that lineup that can give me something to take, one, take pressure off of Milford, and two, let the setter find different options instead of just always having to be yeah. one guy. Ooh. Short serve. We'll give it back to the Whalers. Yeah, a couple of the guys, you know, that Durfee lost last year yep. were also hitters yep. uh, at seniors, and that's, you know, part of it. So you had, you know, you had Milford, and, and you had... Um, I mean, but, I mean, just take a look right now. Now, Milford's the only one that's in this. Sanan just went out, right? Yeah, right. right. Okay, so now you have J.O., you have Souza, okay, and yep. you have Bentley. Now, does any one of those guys really scare you other than Milford? You know, right now, no. No. But they need, that's what I'm saying, that's what you need. You need right. when you make those changes to have that kind of rotation where you got guys you can go to. So yeah. someone has to step up the game when certain guys are out. And right now, Sanan's out. Who's that going to be? Back set is J.O. That's a good that's hit. That's good for J.O. Good hit right there. And the point for the Hilltoppers. Yeah, you know, one one of the guys. You he, know, he needs to he needs to step up the game. Absolutely. One of the bigger contributors from uh, last year and previous years, obviously, um, Anthony Granham was on this team, um, and Anthony was not one of the taller players. Yep. But when you talk about height, we talk about like what Montano can do for New Bedford in yep. terms of elevation. Man, uh, Granham would just hang up there. Uh, so even if the ball was a little late, it's, it's amazing. It's like suspended animation. He made it work. So you had the, you had a threat, right? That that's another example right there. Uh, and I use him because he, I mean, he was started on varsity almost his entire career. Well, then I, I'm a little biased. He was a Fred TV student as well. So. <laughs> um, eight seven. And yes. that's court position in there for New Bedford. And they're not where they're supposed to be defensively. Milford can't really go anywhere else with that. Whoa. Misfired by Rosa and J.O. Stringing together some decent serves. Whaler's not able to uh, take what he's given him. Digging that one out. There he is. Great block, Great block and nobody back. Okay, now that time, that's where Souza and Matusek stepped up their game and made the block.
That's going to be short. Every time it looks like they're ready to make that step, something goes wrong. Yeah. Because right there, and again, up three, could be up four. Mm. Now two, just two with yeah. possession to yeah. New Bedford. That one kind of curling out of bounds and uh, an errant serve. Haven't seen too many of those from New Bedford in this game. And it gets Sanan back in the game. So that really yep. helps. And Milford on the serve. Rosa. Not very hard hit. Good that play. one, though, yeah. They went right back to him. Good play by Rosa. Good footwork by Barboza to get to that. Yeah, Barboza did not set that from the <laughs> normal setter's position either. He was he was moving all over the place. Centeo. Now this is where New Bedford went on their run in game two. Let's see if they do it here. Durfee not going to be able to do anything but no. dump that over. Yep. Oh, that's a good pass right there. There he is again. Out of bounds. Missed that one. So Mason Freitas, a name we have not called. No. Evan, steps into the game. So Brendan Kelly using the bench. One of three, three juniors on this team. Maybe just looking for a, a spot. Tuzik setting. That is in on the line. Durfee up by four. Uh, here we go. Time again. out. We've been here before. Yeah. <laughs> Durfee does for the first time, though, in the match. I'd say Durfee looks more comfortable than New Bedford. New Bedford looks yep. a little out of system right sure. now, and I'm not sure why because nothing's really changed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but something, something's not clicking over these last few points yep. for uh, for the Whalers. Good run from. Durfee, I had the, you know, that missed serve there uh, for Motano to get mm. Sanon back in the game was big. Because yeah. you want to keep him on the bench if you can, as long as you can. But Well, early in the season here, and uh, up next for New Bedford, they'll have a road game on Monday. They're playing Monday, Wednesday, Friday next week before the spring break, which will have a game on the schedule. Uh, but they're on the road at Barnstable Monday, then home for two. They got Hingham, and then next Friday, the 12th, New Bedford Volk. So that's always a great matchup when the two the two teams square off against each other. For Durfee, uh, they're playing um, Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday next week. Mm -hmm. Four games in a week. Two, two on the road, DR and Barnstable, and then home against Attleboro and Braintree. Wow. Yeah. The Braintree game was uh, rescheduled. We talked about that in the open, too. Yep. Not uh, a very good play there from New Bedford. No. Nope. So the Braintree okay. game, they're fitting it in early, and uh, as a result, a four-game week for the Hilltoppers. Great block. That's a guy I want to see get going, too. Durfee with their largest lead of the night, yeah, the six Campos. points. The Campo stepped up with a nice block. So here comes Durfee now with a little bit of momentum. And Freitas yeah. continuing to let it fly as sure. the server. Third touch, Centeo will lob it over. Big swing! And another point for Durfee. Game of momentum, whoever, it whoever has it. Another solid serve. Nothing fancy from uh, nope. Freitas. Just solid, get it over the net. Whaler stopped the bleeding, and they will go on the serve, but a good run for the Hilltoppers Big right time. there. 
you know, even if Jerfy loses this match, that right there, that run of points is something that Coach Kelly can look at on the tape and show the guys and talk about and say, you know, this is, look at this. It's a confidence builder right there to put up a bunch of points at a time and get solid play. Third touch, Jerfy will not be able to do anything with it. Barboza setting, big swing, that's in. Oh! Just out of bounds. And that's Take it back. <laughs> an unforced error that you cannot have when you are the middle man right on top of the net and just flat out miss it. Foster up into the rafters it goes. Coming down, third touch. Can Jerfy get it over? Yep. Milford will get it over. What an effort on all ends of that. That's trouble. Jerfy's going to win the point. You kidding me. <laughs> That's crazy. The momentum has changed That's what tremendously. I mean. Those are the points Durfee was not winning nope. in the first two sets. Nope. We had the Whalers crashing the bleachers over here in front of us, chasing nope. down. Wow. Centeo flying in from the back line. Good block there from Rosa. Whalers will get it back. Foster. Out of bounds, the block goes out of play. Big swing there from Foster. That's okay if you're Durfee because you made them earn that one. Yeah. Right? You challenged them, you came after them, they made the play, and that's okay because they'll remember that next time that they will be there. Ooh, tough play, you're gonna poke uh, it over at the net. Nice the job. Camp, yeah, but I would like to see the Campos put that away. Out of bounds, Hilltoppers with the point. And that's twice from Tavares in this one. Well, this match, uh, an hour and three minutes old, we started right on time, which rarely, yep. <laughs> rarely five, happens for varsity five, volleyball. 15. Rarely happens, we had done 5.30 for a while. Sure. And uh, then they went back to 5.15 because they found with the sweeps, in JV uh -huh. happening so frequently that um, there was so much downtime, you know, and, and it, I mean, I get it, sure, I don't care. Tell me what time the game is, I'll be here 90 minutes before, <laughs> that's it, you know. But um, we don't usually start right at 5.15, so that was nice to start on time. J.O., good block that's in front, yep. Montano with the block there in front. And the Whalers with the point down eight. We'll get the ball here, Foster will serve. Five points away, New Bedford needs a big run to cut this one close. Milford takes a big swing from basically the back line. Off the barrel. <laughs> Big point for the Whalers. Another strong serve from Foster. Milford. All right, so let's see now if Kelly, yeah, I don't think he'll call timeout yet. I think he'll think maybe, maybe one more. If they get the 15, he might call it. Me, I would probably go to 16, but let's see what he, if, what happens here. Oh, yes. oh well that changes things quite a bit. Big time. Don't need to call nothing now. Nope. Lead back to seven, and Durfee will serve. And it's going to be De Silva heading back, who kind of whiffed a bit on his last serve. It was one and done. It was short. He's been solid tonight. So Good, rota good rotation from De Campos. He played well. Yes. During a stretch in there. Some good blocks. Good dig there. Centeo okay. setting for Montano. Comes flying in. Swinging off balance. Now Milford far side. It's blocked. Great block in front by Tavares and Shields. Back to six. Nice. So 
see what New Bedford's thinking here now. Gave up one point, but won four. Now they want to give up one point and see if they can win another four. That's right. That's the key. That one skips over, dug out, uh, sent right okay. back. Whalers will get the free ball here. Uh, Look out for one. Montano. Good block to slow it up by the Hilltoppers, oh, and no. now they'll get the set. Got away with it. Both teams getting away with it. Out of bounds. Another loose ball, one by Durfee. Oh, too much, too much. He wound up and fired, but <laughs> way out of play. Durfee two points away from staving off elimination and forcing a fourth. Good serve from J.O. Dug out by Montano. Milford. Beautiful. Ball was tipped and just kind of confused Rosa. Yeah. Didn't know what it was doing and it just came down in his face. Set point. Yep. Hilltoppers played like a different team here in the third. Wheeler's not done yet. I'll tell you, when he gets up, boy. <laughs> I know, it's unbelievable. Man, he's got some leap. I mean, this is a big hole, though, down eight, obviously. This will be very tough. Yeah, he That's long. Durfee extends it to a fourth set, winning convincingly here in the third by nine. 25-16. We're not done. A lot more errors in that one for New Bedford in the third. It just felt totally different. Yep. I mean, really, in terms of just clean play and all. And Durfee really just, they looked totally different. So whatever was talked about in the timeout, I'd say before that third set, clearly worked. <laughs> if you're Brendan Kelly and the Hilltoppers. So, all right, folks, uh, we're getting ready for a fourth set. Some bonus volleyball here on Fred TV, we'll take the break. See you on the other side, stay with us. Hi. 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 Hi, I'm Maggie O'Connell. I'm Julia Hargraves. I'm Alan McNamara, CEO of Main Street Projects. And I'm Kristen Cantara Oliveira, Vice Chair of the Community Preservation Committee. The Bradford Derby Textile College was a prominent training center for over a century. A critical resource that prepared thousands of young people and immigrants to gain employment. In 1899, the state invested approximately $75,000 to construct the Bradford Derby Textile College, named after one of the city's leading industrialists. As technology evolved, so did the curriculum to include classes such as mechanical engineering. But after years of accumulating wealth, northern mill owners could not compete with mills in the south. Alan Macumber and members of the Community Preservation Committee envisioned a transformative project to stave off demolition. The Durfee Textile College is now a vital cornerstone of downtown revitalization. Each of the 55 lost style apartments are uniquely designed with a comfortable blend of errors. 11 of those 55 units meet affordable housing regulations set by the CPC Community Housing Fund. Members of the Historical Commission advocated for renovation over replacement. The 100,000 square foot building contains original flooring, brick walls, staircases, and doors. New construction replicates craftsmanship of 130 years earlier. CPA funds have supported thousands of significant projects in Massachusetts. Thank you for your continued interest in community beautification and betterment. Hilltoppers on the court 
ready for the fourth game here in this best of five match. Well, three minutes was on that to switch sides, and Ben Conturley talked for three minutes. He did, he I know. Did <laughs> not, he did not come out, and he just kept coming after him, saying, hey, we let him back in. We need to get off to a good start here in game four and make them chase us. Yeah, because, you know, let's not forget, the second set, Durfee started out with a lead, a 4 nothing lead, and then a 7-2 to two lead, and Durfee really did cough it up at the end. Yep. You know, that's a significant lead through the first, say, third of the points to have. Um, and New Bedford was able to come back. In the third set, Durfee was never allowing them to come back. They were solid throughout. Um, but clearly, the building blocks, right? First set wasn't too great. Second set was better. Now the third set, Durfee's built confidence, and they're throwing stuff at New Bedford that they're not able to handle. The Hilltoppers on the right will start here with possession and the serve. Again, only one game played for each side. North Quincy for New Bedford was a win, three to one. Durfee at Weymouth losing in five sets their first game. Yeah. And how about that start for the Whalers? Yeah, good back set right there. And perfect timing from number 14, junior outside hitter, Nick Rosa. Montano, a sophomore, Rosa, a junior. Tavaz, a junior, still young group. Yeah, I know it's a, it's almost the exact opposite of you know Durfee's lineup. Only three juniors, eleven seniors on the other side. For Coach Caturley, just four seniors, yep. and one sophomore, one. Yep. and twenty juniors or however many he's got. But only <laughs> one in the juniors. starting lineup in Bob Bozer as a senior. Right. Good block in front, handled by Durfee, and now J.O. sends it back over on the third, flipped over Ooh. by Montano, trying to catch some yeah. napping a bit. No. Oh, J. some J. indecision. On that one. Yeah, a little indecision there. And Coach Kelly, quick to go out there and explain, try to correct it. No, make, you know, again, loose points. Yeah. Got to come away with those. Well, that'll get the confidence back a bit. Yeah, J.O. with the point the boy, for ball, Durfee. Ball got tipped, confused it, couldn't come up with it. So Hilltoppers on the board and now back to serve. This will go to Sanan. Let's see where it's... Uh, Oh, that's a oh. Oh, what it's, a but play it's still by in. Matusik. Everybody thought the point was over, but Durfee did not quit. They didn't stop. And the Hilltoppers are going to get the point. What a play How about that? Did by Matusik. That's wow. incredible. The heat came at him, and man, did he <laughs> come up with that one. Flick of the wrist. Coach Kelly with a big grin after that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Might have been going out. Milford yeah. backed up and played it. Excuse me, Sanin played it, rather. And now three to two. I mean, I don't understand why when, you know, I'm watching Milford on this left side. He has not gone down the line once. Mm -hmm. He's gone to that far corner. You have to start sneaking over there yeah. and say this is where he's going and force him to go down the line. And they're and not doing it. And they're not they keep taking advantage, it. yes. Keep giving it to them. Yep. Out of bounds. Keep asking if it's tipped. It's not tipped. Not even close. There was nobody in the vicinity of that ball. Oh, that's a great serve. Power serve, a lot of downward motion. And another one out of bounds. See, now when you hit like that, two or three, out, 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 now it starts to make you think yeah. where well, you're not going to go for your shots and you're going to be a little bit more tentative now. Yep. I mean, let's face it, the Whalers through the first three sets have pretty much had their way when they really wind up and, and fire. Yep. It's been in bounds. Double touch coming in an unforced error. There's and Durfee's fifth straight point. Uh, 
Another great serve, Centeo playing that one. Gonna go outside. Durfee's point. It wasn't touched. And New Bedford cannot get one ball in right now. No. That's five consecutive misses on the outside. And that's a killer right there. Solid serving from Sanin, but uh, that helps out New Bedford. Because they, they're now, reeling right now. Right, now he comes out of the rotation. This is big for New Bedford. That yeah. They want him sitting down. Well, and then they give it back to him. He's not going to be out for long, I don't think. Nope. Foster with a miscue on the serve. Oh, Sanders going to stay yeah, out for a now. A lot of unforced errors from the Whalers now that they did not do in ones and two. Got to make them play it out. There we go. Well, that's going to feel good for Montano because yeah. he's been struggling, yeah. he, honestly. I mean, he's right on the hit. He's just not getting it to come down. That one he did. Yeah. Ugh, That's one. long. Now you go two bad serves in a row. They are just shooting themselves in the foot. Big time. Jail back to serve for the Hilltoppers. Finish the uh, second set, or third set rather, pretty strong, but that's going to be short lived as Shields haven't really said his name too much tonight, but got himself a good set and a good finish right there for the kill. And Montano will serve 9 5 Durfee. That's out. Third, third in a row. Consecutive. Oh my. I, haven't, I don't think I've ever seen that. No, that's that's From incredibly frustrating. To, you know, especially to that quickly with Shields to get the ball right back and yep. not give Durfee multiple quick hit, get it back, and then you give it up again. It's an ace. Sure is. Milford. Ready to fire again. That one short, and it works. Yeah, maybe, gotta, maybe by design. There's got to be a timeout, and there's got to be a more sense of urgency on this team because I know he's letting them try to figure it out themselves, but we got to light a candle up. <laughs> nice play by De Silva. Oh. Oh, fell in. Mm. Setter wasn't getting over there fast enough. They looked at each other. Yeah. All right, Centeo. Whalers get it back down six. It's 12 to six. See if he can figure out the service I'm problems just here. He got it in. <laughs> Matusik slapping at it. Nobody home. Wow. So out of system that time now for Durfee. Beffitt's got to find some free points. Can get a couple of good serves of their own. That would help them. Ooh, that was. Said no. Wow, that was Even surprising. Yeah. Hmm. I really thought that uh, Rosa touched it twice mm -hmm. there. 12 8. Santeo finds the net. Think and six, six free points off serve for Durfee. Getting them six free ones as New Bedford has hit the net and gone out six times. Wow. And that can happen. Gets all in your head. Freitas had a great run of serves at the end of the third set for Durfee, and he's back to serve now. Oh, Matuzic got tangled up there with DeCampos. Tried to get free, and it was too late by that time as he scrambled back. And now 
the Whalers. As Tavares comes back in. Barboza on the serve. Good set, still to your point, bringing them back a little bit on the set. Not, not riding the line of the net, sending back a little bit, but Santa able to do it. Make, make do with what he had there, 14-9. And Santeo, he's gotta either cover the middle or cover to the side. He's not getting any help, he's solo there, mm. and he's not reading it right. Nice block, good elevation there by Campos. Right, it's going to come on the outside here. And see, so he's going with the Out same spot every time. If he starts to go down the line, then they're okay. Then yeah. Let him go, but you got to make him do something. So take the spot, back up, move Montano in, and they're not doing it. Got to read the play. Because he haven't, haven't done it yet. Here Good serve from Rosa. J.O. swinging. And that's okay. Left hand. Wow. How about that? The lefty. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Well, the Whalers have cut it to three. It's 14 11. Cut that one in. J.O. swinging late. Had some good height on that one, too. Yeah. But. This could be a quick timeout. Let's see. He's going to take it. Coach Kelly will call timeout as the Whalers have cut it to two. Well, we were talking off camera. Um, I mentioned it during... The end of the basketball season, but uh, we are very much looking forward to going to Cooperstown <laughs> two weeks from today. Wow. Um, we're heading to Cooperstown with the baseball team. Durfee and Case going to be playing a double day field on Friday, April 19th. Uh, we're going on the th on the 18th, the Thursday. Uh, going to spend some time in the village at the Hall of Fame Museum. Document that. We actually spoke to the museum this week. They said... You guys are nonprofit. Your access is it's an editorial. Film and do whatever you want. I'm thrilled that you're coming all the way from Fall River. So, huh? Is it that easy? Really? Very <laughs> nice to them. So I'm so excited. So yes, we will have sights and sounds from inside the base National Baseball Hall of Fame Museum, and then um, we will have coverage of the varsity baseball game on Friday the 19th, a 10 a.m. game. Who says? Fenway's got it early wow. with Fenway's got it early with 11 a.m. on Patriots Day. We got 10 a.m. baseball for you, folks. <laughs> and you come out of the timeout and you put it in the net. Yep. I, I just that amazes me. <laughs> that I never understood. I know. You. I mean, you could go long and just not put it in the net. Yeah. Because here's because here's the thing. Bad mistakes. It, it it makes me think of something that uh, my grandfather told me with golf too, it, and it's kind of same principle as. If it didn't make it mm -hmm. to the pin, it never had a chance of going in. Correct. If it doesn't make it over the net, it doesn't have a chance to be played or a chance at a point. Yep. You're just totally burying it. Agree. It never was going to be anything other than a loss of a point for yep. you. I and mean, I don't <laughs> care if you just dink it. You've got to make them hit the three hits and put yeah. it away. But just to give them that, I mean, I mean, they've given them so many yeah. these last two games, and Duffy's taking advantage exactly what they should. As much as Duffy gave them some points in the first two. Oh, yeah. So and that's exactly. And Milford takes something off, and it really messes up the Whalers. They can't return it. And now Durfee back on the serve. De Silva from right to left. Montano calling for it. He won't get it. They go to the backside there. Tavares still in play. Third touch. Oh, he touched the net. Uh, Was uh, J.O., I believe. Tough one. Yeah. Well, Tavares has done this. He's got to make sure he gets the ball in the court. He must make Durfee play.
That's coming Perfect right example. back. Perfect example. Yeah, and it's coming right back. Whalers can set. That's out of bounds. No deflection. Be tough play, almost a collision there. Durfee back up by four. This looks like the makings of five written all <laughs> over it. Big time. It's amazing, you, you know, um, Jake Fitzgerald, who uh, one of our Fred, yep. student, former students as well, you know Jake, he was Oof. talking to us before the game. That's a big point for the Whalers. He came over after uh, practice, and uh, the number of volleyball matches he did with me a few years ago, they'd start out with a team up to nothing. Oh. And then we're, then all of a sudden we blink, and it's it's set number five. Yeah. <laughs> it's unbelievable. You get those sometimes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. Teams don't know how to finish, don't know how to close, haven't been there before. Yeah. You know. Milford, great block in front. Good job by Shields. Shields getting fired up again. Back to back points for him. Down to two. And this is where, you know, you know, Durfee's got to figure out how do I close? I'm a senior group. I should be able to do this. Oh, that's tough. A gift. Yeah. One point game. Only one now with New Bedford serving. That's, oh, is that on the line? <laughs> no, just out. Oh, it was close. That was very close in the corner. But it goes Durfee's way. Popped straight up, yep. third touch now, and loft it over. Shields can't get it over. I like that play right there. That would have been something different right from the middle, but unfortunately, not able to do it. They went for the very quick set and swing, not enough height. Durfee back up by three, a little breathing room, but they give it away. They give a point back and yeah, possession. and that was Milford, too, who's had a... That's a rare yep. miscue. And now Centeo back at it. Can the Whalers climb back here in the fourth to end it, or can Durfee complete the comeback and force the fifth? Good attempt there, Matuzic. I like it, because that's yep. something also Durfee hasn't really given New Bedford, only but maybe two or three times in the match. Have we seen Matuzic do that? Foster. Big swing. Whalers loft it, third touch, and sent back over. Got a good rally going here. Set backwards though. Trying to get it for Milford, but he's on the back Very line. Close. That's the wrong way to go. Yeah, if it's not swinging, tapping. This could be good right here for San and no. Nice job by Montano in the back line, and Buried into the net. Rosa trying to finish it and not able to. Four possessions from each side there. Yes. That's a long rally. New Bedford never had the chance to go after it. Or no. they did not want to go after it. And just placed it over. Can't do that. Three point lead again for Durfee. Foster will try to get it back and he does. No! That was in bounds, Chris. That one was in. That uh, should be New Bedford point. I thought that was in. Yeah, and they're gonna talk about it now, but. I thought the ball was that in. Was, that was totally in bounds. I'm not sure what the call was. Other he wants a, a do-over, but 
I, I thought the ball was in personally. Yeah. Yeah, that's the right call. Well, at least I think it is. <laughs> you thought it was. Yeah. yeah. Well, she called it out, but she should have. Because that was in. Yeah. Okay, so Whalers have it, down right. two versus down four. That's a huge swing in a different direction. Yeah. But I still stand firm. That that to me that was the right call. I it agree. was it was it looked in. We had a clear clear view at it. Point to the Whalers. See now, same thing there. Why did he? What, why was he not aggressive and not going for that instead of trying just to throw it down? Yeah. So I'm surprised. And no timeouts called by either coach. Another one. Oh, that's a short one. It's in. Durfee back up by two and the ball. Who wants it, Chris? Who wants it? <laughs> Anybody want Someone's it? Someone's got to take over. This is what you play for, to take over the game. Who oh. wants to take over the game? Matuzic in a good spot. He had just served. That's on the line. Will they give it to him? They do. Timeout, New Bedford. That was another close call. I said we were going five halfway through. And I continue to think we're going five <laughs> halfway to. Just have that feeling. Yeah. Well, this match an hour and a half old. Coming up here on 10 of seven. Of course, when we go to the fifth, fifth set, if we go to the fifth, I should say, the fifth set only goes to first to 15. It's a shorter set. We switch halfway through it. Switch sides. Both sides using almost the whole timeout. And Matuzic will serve. It's Ooh, a big swing. Good, good. Save by no uh, He really he saved that point for sure. Huge stretch. That's trouble. He hit it out. Durfee's point. Now I thought Durfee hit the ball, and when they did, they hit it out. But I don't know. I think the official says that a new Bedford player touched it. That's the only thing I can think of. Well, yeah, it didn't land in bounds. No, it but there out. were two Whalers players right yeah. there, so I, that's the only I'm thing we can he assume. Says he touched it, and it happened. I mean, our official on the floor there is feet away. So, set point for Durfee. Can they force the fifth? Double touch. And Coach Kelly saying, <laughs> "Sandin, why would you just throw it over?" Oh boy. All right, Rosa and the Whalers control their fate. Still set point for Durfee. Whalers serving. We get another one back. Yep, there's one. Another good serve. Ended here. He went for it. That's trouble. Third oh. touch. It is out of bounds. We're going to five. Sure uh. A three-point victory in the fourth. And the Hilltoppers have forced a sudden death fifth set. We're going to keep it right here. We're not going to take a break. You're going to stay on this side. We're still a three-minute. Should stay on each side, and then they change halfway. That's right. I mean, Chris, this has been like literally 
a tale of two matches, <laughs> the way that this has kind of happened here. Because, I mean, you look at the way Durfee, with the first set, they lost 25-16. It was close until about that 14th point, and then the Whalers just totally went off. Well, then the second set, Durfee hung in there. It was close. Five-point win for the Whalers. Durfee makes a statement. Third set, they win by nine. 25-16. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now in this set here, Hilltoppers, I thought, controlled it for most of the way. And Whalers kept chipping away, just couldn't finish it off, much like the second set. So it's really like, like two different matchups here. The way this one's turned out, it's really... A game of momentum. We've said it a few times, and Durfee has had the momentum for sure. They did switch sides. They don't always switch sides to start the fifth. In this case, they did. And then they'll switch again halfway through. Um, so Durfee will be on your left to start the fifth. And the Whalers on your right. And... Uh, just to kind of recap a little bit too, we talked about what's next for these two schools. Uh, nothing for either side until Monday. New Bedford with another road game Monday at Barnstable, then their home Wednesday, Friday. Hingham and New Bedford Volk. Then they'll play a morning game at Catholic Memorial during the vacation week. That's their only game during the vacation week. So between Friday the 12th and Monday the 22nd, just three games in that long span. So that's... Always a little tough when you mm -hmm. have that big of a break, especially if you're playing three game weeks to start the year and you have that kind of a lull. And sometimes it's not bad though. You want to really get yourself a couple of good practices mm. and, and you know, you saw something that you really want to work on, mm -hmm. you know, things like that. So, um, you know, it, it has its ups and downs. Durfee will be on the road their next two, Monday and Wednesday, Dighton Rehoboth and Barnstable. Then they're home for five straight. Because uh, the Braintree makeup mixed in there. Next Thursday, Attleboro Friday, the 12th against Braintree. Then they're off the entire vacation week and come back and play three at home. Dighton Road with Brockton and Bellingham Monday, Wednesday, Friday, the last week of April. So a lot of home games coming up for Durfee um, over the next couple weeks. Fifth set. Who wants it? I asked you that question before. <laughs> well, who wants it? Durf New Bedford <laughs> wanted it for the first two, but Durfee wanted it more in the second two. Simple as that. It's a great battle. Really has been. Um, lived up to the billing because uh, we've really seen some great play here. Both, both sides taking advantage of the mistakes of the other when given the opportunity. Good block in front by the Whalers. That was Tavares and Rosa, and they will start with the points. Mm -hmm. Might have been going out on the side there, but uh, J.O. played it. Yep. It was definitely, he, I mean, he was straddling that line. Oh. Well, that does go out. Was there a deflection? Yes. Matuzic can't believe it. And it's too straight for the Whalers to start the fifth. Yep. So he touched that one. I can't remember the last time New Bedford started a game and was leading. Yeah. I think they've been behind mostly all of them. Out of bounds. And a timeout yeah. very quickly, yeah, not surprised. And a, very, and a very smart one, too. Yeah, not surprised. Uh, you, just, you just can't. Say, come on, fellas, you got to settle down here. 
Yeah, not not a good start. Remember, it's first to 15, too. You don't have a lot of wiggle room here. So you give up three straight mm -hmm. to start it. That's not, you're digging yourself a really quick hole. Right. Here we go. Whalers back to serve again. That one out, and this time JL lets it go. <laughs> I, 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 I don't know. Me, when I'm with Joe Cabral, and we talk about this all the time, get the ball down the middle of the court after a timeout. I, 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 I've seen so <laughs> many misses, yeah. I can't even believe it, how many you can miss. But it continues to happen. They're, yep. not, they're not watching your broadcast, After Chris, that's I'll, for sure. Because I don't know. <laughs> Me and Joe discuss this every time we come off a timeout. Yeah. Saying, well, we just stopped the momentum, and sure enough, serve it in the net yep. or serve it out. <laughs> it's crazy. And that's out of bounds. Matuzic with a misfire. And it really wasn't close. It yeah, was well, very I mean, diagonal. Again, you know, in the fifth game, you're trying not to give up free, yeah. easy points. I know you want to try to find the line. I get it. But <laughs> go back to back. This is nerves now, yeah. Evan. This is all nerves. Everybody's nervous. Everybody's nervous. There we go. We got one over. Yes. Oh, that skips over the net. Yeah. Whalers have to play it. Montano! The Boom! Didn't get there fast enough to go for the double block. Unfortunately for him. That materialized so quickly. Milford, it's blocked. Yes. Durfee's going to get a free shot at this. Oh, now the good block in front nice by Shields. Now. Shields and Tavares again, locking down the net. 6-3. They change at 7? Yeah. Is that correct? Yep, just want to make sure. Let's see where he goes with this one. He got it over. That's a good start. Good yep. serve there from Foster. J.O. with the good swing. Hilltoppers with the point. I don't know what the call was. Somebody in the net? I don't know. So six to four. Whistle halting play, costing the Whalers a point. Good, oh, good dig. Barboza came oh, all the play. way. What a play from Matano. And he falls into, the, play. falls into the scoreboard on the table. That well, was he, incredible. He had to hit a cut shot to get it back to go and not <laughs> touch the wire. No. And, and he then, got it. And it just landed in bounds before the. <laughs> it really is. So they must be switching at eight. Yep. I, I always, honestly, okay. I always forget. Seven or eight. Now eight to five, they will switch sides. The Whalers up by three again and in control with the ball. Now 
It's going to be Montano serving. Out of bounds. Timeout, Durfee. Again, this is only a minute timeout. And Brendan Kelly let him let him have it a little bit. You can see it in his face. He's a little frustrated. That last point, mm -hmm. when it, that last point stomped the court and because yep. and, it was a serve that it got over, it was playable, it just exploded yep. off the off the receive and yep. Hilltoppers down four. First to 15, Whalers will serve again. And this is a, a must-have point for Durfee. Can't let it get 10-5. You need 9-6 here, and they got it. Did they not put the ball in play? Did the they officials did not, not? She said it was not. It, she did. He went on he his went own. On, he went on the buzzer. That's he what it was, the timeout buzzer, yeah. I think. Get away with that one. Yeah. And again, it's like, off another timeout, <laughs> yeah. off another out serve. Put the ball in play. Wow. Yeah. As a well, tennis coach, I know, because I've seen it millions of times. Yeah, well now, he, but he, he got the reprieve. Yeah. Durfee gets the point anyway, yeah. so that's big. But yeah. honestly, when you look at that sure. and say, geez, you get it's like ice in the kicker. He misses it on right. the timeout, and then he'll make the, yeah. make the kick, and here you go. Milford will serve for Durfee. Right, here we go, the guy you want too. 9-6. This is the guy I would want. That's a good set. Oh, he fanned on it. Third touch, out of bounds. Rosa can't get it over. That's a good set from Barboza. Timeout, Whalers. Well, little cat and mouse action <laughs> going on here. To say, wait a minute, you call timeout? I'll call timeout. So they're trying to figure out, you know, make the correct plays. We saw last time Kelly come out after maybe 30 seconds, yeah. which Caturley took all the minute once again. Let's see where they go here. And it's been a battle on the skip Karen basketball court. It has. This, is, this turned out to be, you know, the way New Bedford took the first set so convincingly, then they go up 2 nothing. You think, oh, this might be a quick night. But here we are coming up on two hours. Mm -hmm. We're one point game in the fifth late stages of the fifth mind you and uh i mean it's anybody's match this one's been a great one milford will serve for durfee he's back with the ball both sides used most of the time out that time here we go hey after a timeout yeah. Got Not it over. <laughs> Correct. Oh. Nobody home. It's a good try. It was. Sanan. That ball exploded. The Whalers get that little cushion up by two now. Santeo will not get it over. They're letting Durfee hang around. Sure are. Uh, These service issues did not happen in the first two no, sets. Oh, that's called nerves now. It's all about who's got the nerves. 
A lot of mistakes on both teams. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you right now, let's see if Freitas can shake him yep. off, because Freitas has been solid tonight. And he didn't start. Oh, oh, play. oh how about that? Rosa, right across. Barboza will serve. Oh, well, they took Freitas out of that equation. Freitas with one good serve. <laughs> and uh, the big hit there to give the Whalers the point, 11-9. Oh, oh my goodness. How did Barboza get that over with the left hand? Centeo will serve for Rosa. Wants another Again, one, and he goes one. right to J.O. Wow, two for Rosa. Couldn't handle it. Three points away. Barboza with a good serve. Straight up, though, on De Silva, trying to play it. Now third touch. Hilltopper's got to give the free ball to the Whalers. As they set up for another kill. Good dig there, but it won't get over. Milford gave up the body. Two points away. Good set from Matuzic. Blocked in front. I'm not sure if it actually got over the top of the net either, to be honest with you. And it is match point for the Rosa. Whalers. Well, Rosa has been the guy here for New Bedford down the stretch with a couple of big ones. And it's match point. Oh, misplayed by Montano. And I'll tell you, I, Durfee's lucky he got that off because yep. Milford was coming in on Sainan and they both took a swing at the ball. Matuzic serving. Match point, New Bedford. Centeo to Barboza. Foster to finish. And it is Durfee with the point. We're not done. Another good serve from Matuzic. Good Coming play. back, exploding onto Silva. Whalers get back another set. try. There Rosa again. blocked. Foster into the net. Let's see if someone calls timeout. There it is. Yeah, I'm gonna let's there go. It is. We gotta go back two points though ago because the hit from Foster trying to end it. Yeah, it bounced. Yeah. So it bounced on this side. It means Durfee touched it, and then it hit the court. But I think we're saying that it hit the net. and then it Bounced off net, the net. Yeah, and it rolled, and then mm. it went out of bounds. That's what I'm thinking. The way, I, I'm saying the way it bounced, so yeah. you wouldn't think you that, because it that. exploded yeah. off of his hands. I mean, there was well, no contest from New Bedford on that, right. obviously. So right. I, I know it was the right call, yeah. but I'm telling you, what it looked like, though, Clearly not what it was. It makes it look like Durfee got away with one. That's my point, and it wasn't the case, but kind of an optical illusion there. Can Durfee survive a couple more points here? Or will New Bedford close it out? And another match point opportunity. Matuzic trying to serve here after a timeout. He does get it over. Durfee with the point. Bad, bad pass. Yeah. Try to get it to the center and instead went to the net. And he puts it down. Got to play. Here we go. Still match point. Right here. That's what they went it. to. They went to the big man who was hot during this game, and it was Nicholas Rosa to take it and win it for New Bedford. Whalers take the fifth. They survive it. 15 to 13, and they win the match. 
Three games Three to, to two. two. Well, yeah. let me tell you, Evan, for a second game of the season. <laughs> oh, this was fantastic. Uh, Are you kidding? Quite, quite impressive by both teams to come out and play the way they played. Yeah. Very impressive. No, it was. I mean, this this was an amazing game to watch. Great match. And, uh, you know, for Durfee, unfortunately, they come out on the losing end yep. and lose it 3-2 to two in a rivalry game. And, and, you know, it's one of those that you really will dissect and say, well, this possession and that possession were the difference. You know, if it's a game down the stretch, that means something. Um, but the, the tough part about it is that Durfee stays winless through two and New Bedford goes up 2 nothing, and they win the first, you know, conference game, if you will. It's not a true Southeast conference, yeah. but nonetheless, still a league game, as we call it. And, um, man, oh, man, a two-hour match just shy of that. And uh, the Hilltoppers, unfortunately, unable to complete the comeback in what no, was a great effort. But I think this is the one that both coaches will go to the film oh, and yeah. really dissect <laughs> this one yeah. uh, and say, hey, listen, this is where we were here. This is what we were supposed to be doing. And, and both teams will carry it when you're winning and when you're losing and how you dig down and fight back. So good, good game by both teams. All right, folks. Well, we thank you for tuning in. Great to be Back doing some games that next week, a very busy production week for us at Fred TV and, and with the government channel side of things. At the moment, we don't have any games scheduled here locally uh, before the spring break. Um, so right now, as it stands, our next coverage will be from Cooperstown. Ah. Two weeks from tomorrow. Uh, but if something should change and we're able to add something next week, check back with us here on our Fred TV Sports Facebook page. Like and follow us. We'll let you know if we're going to add a game next week or not. Uh, we'd like to. There's some rain outs that have to get mm -hmm. postponed. <laughs> well, so, if not, you know, enjoy your trip to Cooperstown and have fun. Yeah, thank you, Chris. You if like not, we, we're looking forward to being a double day and at the uh, National Baseball Hall of Fame. So uh, until next time, folks, Chris Santos, great to have you with me as always. Cameraman David Montero tonight. I'm Evan Massoud. So long from Durfee.